Welcome to our training today. We're, we're going to be talking, uh, talking you through cur uh, trip and, and, uh, and kind of educating you on how to do it. Like I said, October 1, every extension office will be using this for travel only, okay? Travel, miles, uh, lodging, meals, all that is now going through to go through the, the trip system. So you can kind of uh, get started by going to the internal site. Everyone uses the internal site. Um, and we, ha we now, as financial operations, have a website here in the middle, the one with the dollar sign. So if you go to Extension Financial Operations, you'll see our page. Kind of looks like this. Uh, and I'm going to start over here on the right. Upcoming deadlines, we're hoping that uh, is a resource for you to kind of realize what's upcoming. We want to keep updating that. Now we have it up till the end of the, uh, the year. December, so we'll start adding things to that to try to make you aware of what's, what's on the uh, schedule coming up, what you need to be aware of, some deadlines. A lot of you already know this, but it may be a resource for those of, of you who don't. So it is there. Financial operations team. Those uh, four individuals there, Chris Shotwell is the director of financial operations. He is uh, Jeremy and I's supervisor. Tina Ward, everyone uh, uh, has probably heard Tina Ward's name for years uh, and may have not met her. Tina was one of our unsung, unsung heroes in extension because she made sure we all got paid, right? She made sure if there was an issue with our pay, that she contacted us and made sure we got it right. So that was one of Tina's big jobs. She's transitioned away from that now, um, and we, we've got another person doing that. But Tina is also going to be uh, supporting District 4 in uh, TRIP and, and QuickBooks and, and everything we're doing. Tina is our lead uh, on TRIP, so if anything, uh, you have questions, feel free to call me. Uh, if I'm not available, Tina would be your next uh, best person out of our team. Uh, of course, there's me, Ty Back, and Jeremy Teal. Uh, we, we talked about that a little bit earlier. And we're getting ready to add two more ladies to our team um, for business purposes so they can approve some trips. And we'll talk about those in, in a little bit. Uh, but they are, are uh, Kim King and, and Lisa Bowen. So they'll be there soon. University links in the middle. Uh, the most important ones there is My UK. Everyone knows uh, My UK. That's where we go and request our time uh, off. We uh, hourly we put in our, our time that we worked, um, get our W-2s. So My UK is there. Other resources may be a, a, a reference for you: Human Resources, uh, Business Procedures Manual, uh, everything there. Um, most important things I think on this page are here on the left. Uh, and we'll talk about those. The first one is extension policies and procedures. And over here on the right, or on the left, you'll see that these are our current policies, policies procedures, and guidelines. We have kind of four different places, the CES manuals, the county office procedures, district board guidelines, and the extension manual. And everybody knows that it's hard to keep up with four things, right? There's probably, it says maybe one thing in one and another thing and another, so they conflict a little bit. So we are in the process, as soon as we get trip kind of behind us, of cleaning all that up. Okay, we're writing those, we're consolidating those, we're proofreading those, and making sure that we're cleaning all that up. Uh, that's a bigger task than it sounds, okay? So it's, it's going to take a, a lot of, of brain power and time to do that. Uh, again, at the bottom there, if you, if you wanted to click on any of those financial topics, they're exactly what we have now, okay? On the left is kind of our layout to where we're going, and it's under construction. You can kind of, or on the right, I don't know my left and right this morning, I'm sorry. Uh, on the right is kind of where we're going, uh, the layout we're going, the outline form, um, and those that are highlighted in blue, you can click on that, it'll take you to the current policy. We have cleaned it up a little. It looks a little bit better in PDF form, but we're still going to proofread that and it'll be new coming soon. Uh, the ones that are not uh, blue and underlined, they uh, do not have anything right now, but we're working on them, okay? So hopefully in the future, if you need to know about cash handling, you can click on cash handling and have all of our policy right there in one place, all right? 
so and so on down down the page. Going back, trainings, presentations, and quick reference guides is where we'll kind of live and stay today from now on. This is where our team puts everything that we go out and do. So if you didn't get to see our presentation at Natural Bridge a couple weeks ago, we have our PowerPoint up here, okay? Or if you, uh, uh, the training that we're doing today, if you get back to your office and need to know something, everything I'm using is here. Trainings, presentations, and quick reference guides. It's kind of a plain website right now, but over here on the left, at the bottom, it says trip, travel, reimbursement system. And that's where everything we're doing today is going to stay. We don't come out and bring a, a jump drive or anything like that. Everything's online for us as well as for you. So trip, travel, reimbursement system. All this has all of our resources, and I'll zoom in there uh, for this training. So travel services website. We are all UK employees, okay? We are all UK employees. Uh, Travel Services is a uh, division of UK. Their website is here. Uh, it breaks down all the trip information. All the training materials are there. Um, if, say, for instance, if you needed to know a hotel receipt, what, what you need on a hotel receipt, okay? Hotel receipt, the, it's there. Now you have to have the name of the traveler. That's pretty obvious. Name of the hotel, dates of arrival, departure, room rate, Top of the credit card used, and most important one I think that gets people is the payment for the hotel charges and the taxes that you have to pay. We want that to be a zero balance at the bottom. Now I say that because a lot of times I get up and I'm used to just packing up and I'm in a hurry and I know you all are, and you get in the car and you go to your next thing, right, when you go on a, on a trip. But, and you, you pick up the one that comes underneath the door at two o'clock in the morning. Well, usually that does not work because it still has a balance on it. So usually just, uh, you used to have to stop by the front desk, check out, get the zero balance receipt. Okay, does that make sense? So make sure that it has the zero balance on it. All right, so other things like that are on here, car rental receipt requirements, et cetera. So uh, there's also some forms, uh, some websites that we'll kind of reference later. Uh, but this is all there for you to use, and it's easily found off of our training website uh, there. Let's talk a little bit about our policies for travel. UK uh, E-5-1 is our policy for travel. It's 17 pages of great reading. So if you're bored, uh, if you need something to read at their, your, your next training that you're going to, Feel free to pull up E-5-1. Uh, it is a really good uh, policy. It's, it's kind of what we would like for ours to be. You, you click on whatever and, and it takes you there. So the other day I had a question on parking and tolls. <clears throat> we know where FCS agents are at San Antonio right now. Some of them had a question on parking. So I just went to parking, clicked on it. There's our parking uh, policy. Okay, it's not too bad. So hopefully that, that will be of use to you. I think one of the best things here that I have uh, uh, used is section six, non-reimbursable expenses. I think if you read through this, it will give you a great idea of what can and cannot be reimbursed. Okay, now that's not an all-inclusive list, but it will give you a, a good idea of reimbursement. For instance, parking tickets, okay? So parking tickets on you, sorry. So uh, that's in there. Um, going back. So the next two things, and one is how to process a day trip and how to process an overnight trip. And that's the way we need to start thinking about our travel. Most of the time we're, we're used to thinking about all of our miles in one, and all, you know we just turn in one uh, request for payment and we get reimbursed, correct? One check, one check back from the county, uh, treasurer, whatever. Now we're needing to think about your miles, your trips, and, and was it an overnight trip or was it a day trip? Now just uh, the overnight uh, trip's pretty self-explanatory. You, you're going on trip, you're staying all night. Most of our trips in extension are three to four days long. 
You stay in a hotel somewhere. Day trips are those miles that you have whenever you go to a meeting or you go pick up uh, supplies or you go to a training somewhere, but you're coming home that night and laying in your bed, okay? So I don't know if you guys noticed it. You probably did. Back in January, we changed curves a little bit to where there's a day trip tab and an overnight trip tab. This is why. One big reason, policy says we cannot be reimbursed for meals and lodging if it's not an overnight stay, okay? And we've had found some instances where meals were being reimbursed on day trips, so we have to separate those out now. This, uh, and this will, is kind of how we need to think about things. So how to process a day trip. Uh, this is the UK uh, training. Uh, it's a PDF of a PowerPoint that's 80 plus pages long. Um, you can review this at your leisure. We, uh, we kind of, at first this was our training, but we found that it was better to kind of actually go in and walk through the, the tr trip request line by line. Okay, and we can talk about it. You can ask me a question when we get there. But this is there for you to use. This is kind of what uh, campus was given. Uh, it's a great 80 plus page PowerPoint. Uh, but sometimes I found it easier to, to learn if we actually walk through it. Same thing with an overnight trip. Uh, there's another, I'll just click on it, 80, 80 plus page PowerPoint. Uh, this one's 91 actually. It just goes through everything. It's got some good screenshots in it if you like that. Kind of tells you exactly where to log on, where to click. So it's a good resource. It's there for you to use. Also, if you are a supervisor, if you supervise someone and approve their time, their leave, uh, whatever, you will now be approving their travel, okay? So you will be in line to approve their travel. So how to approve that, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and before, going forward, uh, if you get back and you, you forget how to do it, it's really easy, but here's how to do that. How to set yourself up as a proxy, how to copy trips uh, to new dates the same employee. A lot of those there uh, for you to use because they will be helpful uh, when you get back. Military time conversion table. We do have to put this in in military time. You'll see why in just a second. Here's some things that we come up with, the quick reference guides. These are extension specific. So we created these mainly for your, your use. Uh, it's kind of, it's what I emailed you the links to whenever I emailed you uh, yesterday, day before, whenever that was. Uh, these are, are you, me intended for you to print those out if needed. We want to leave it to, up to you. They are step-by-step -step guides on, on how to go through a trip, whether it be day trip or an overnight trip. So here's the, the day trip one. We've done a lot of screenshots, try to help you out there. Uh, I will say these will change just a little bit. Uh, in, the, in these, we started from create new travel document. And I'm going to start my presentation uh, in Traveler Work Center. So that's going to change on that document. So uh, if you get back and look at this and think what I said, it's going to be a little bit different. So trip overview. Everyone see that? Okay. All right, so let's get into it. What is TRIP? TRIP is a part of the SAP system. So University of Kentucky needs a database, right? We have a huge database at, at UK with a lot of our records in it, and it's massive. I mean, the things we need to keep are, are, are massive. So they contracted with the company SAP. SAP is a German company, um, and, and they, it's a great company. So, but TRIP is just a bolt on to that. So whenever uh, extension needs, needs a reimbursement process for travel. A lot of different systems were, were looked at, um, but TRIP was decided on because it could just bolt right onto the SAP system. Everything lives in the SAP system. So it's, the, it's our solution to, to create the document, streamline it, submit it, get it approved, and, pay, and paid all through one system, all right? Uh, all of your supporting documents are going to be attached to the TRIP. They're available for, for review throughout the approval process. Um, they're going to be there once you attach them until if you delete them. Hopefully you won't have to do that. 
I don't recommend it, but they're there for good. You don't have to file them in your office or you don't have to uh, keep up with a paper. All documentation uh, uh, is stored electronically based on the, the retention requirements, so they'll, they'll be there, I said, for good for as long as, as we require. They're, they're there, okay? Travel reimbursements will now be made through direct deposit, and that could be good, it could be bad for some of us. It was probably bad for me because I would get that check and my wife didn't know anything about it, okay? That was my fun money, okay? So now... It's her money. It goes into her bank, and you know how that goes. It's, it's her money. So uh, it's through direct deposit. This will go into your main bank account. Whatever your check, your paycheck goes into, it goes into that one, okay? It does not split. If any of you do a split check uh, for any purposes, it does not split. It comes in as soon as it gets approved. It does not come in with your paycheck or on top of your paycheck or anything like that, all right? Uh, no paper travel vouchers to fill out. If you've been here around like as long as I have, you remember whenever we had to do those paper vouchers and we had to call our district secretary and get a number and a lot of times if you made a mistake, it took you three to four months to get reimbursed and it was just a bad deal. It's probably the reason why everyone went and just put that money back on the counties for state fair, okay? Because you had to fill out that form, it was a, it was a process. So there's none of that. In the TRIP system, there's uh, no paper to deliver for signatures. There is one signature that we need, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. You are, you can do that electronically through your office if you're tech savvy, okay? Um, the system is gonna calculate per diem and mileage automatically. You say our curve system was doing that. To an extent it was, to an extent it was, but we were not uh, getting it 100% right. Uh, so if, if Jeremy and I went to a meeting in Boulder, Colorado, and Jeremy looked up the per diem rate for Boulder, and he found uh, the Boulder County, Colorado, it may be different, okay? And we may, we may put the wrong things in, but this will make sure that you get the exact per diem rate that you're entitled to, all right? It does it automatically. Also, to save you some time in the, in the future, once you kind of get the hang of this, you're going to be doing this at least once a month. Um, you can kind of, you can create that one trip and then you copy it. Most of our county miles or our monthly miles are, it's going to be 90% the same, just the number of miles difference. So you can copy that trip, save you about five minutes in, in doing so. I'll say that and I pause there and say that I've heard a lot of people think that this is going to take a lot of their time. It does not. It, it takes about 10 minutes to do maybe for a whole month, okay? I can probably do this quicker than I can fill out a payment request and walk it to the staff assistant in the front to give to the treasurer. So don't get hung up on what you've heard that this is a, a, gonna take a lot of your time. We have five different roles. We could have chosen up to nine, uh, but that would slow down the process, so we've chosen five, okay? One of them is a proxy. Now this is a, a totally an up to you thing. A proxy is just what it says. A proxy can enter the trip request in for someone else. And we have, have some offices that have used this. Uh, it makes sense for some of those offices. Some people are not tech savvy. Some people are and would, would not mind doing this for their agents or whoever. This is completely up to you in your office. You do not have to do a proxy, but you can, okay? Um, now, if, if, if Ron asked me to do his proxy and I, I put in his, all of his leave or all of his uh, miles and, and uh, meals and all that, does that take Ron out of the mix as the traveler? No. So the traveler is the person doing the traveling uh, and getting the money back, getting your reimbursement. As the traveler, you can start this document and it, it'll go all the way through or you can have the proxy do it, but the traveler, if the proxy puts it in for the traveler, they still have to approve it. So it does not take them out of the mix. 90 plus percent of our counties are just, it's all starting with the traveler, okay? After it leaves the traveler, it goes to the supervisor. The supervisor is whoever approves the time, or whoever approves the leave of that person. So agents, uh, for those of you uh, who don't have county managers, it goes to 
your district director. Uh, those of you who do have county managers, it goes to that county manager first. And then it goes to the uh, budget officer. So the budget officer as of today is still Rhonda, I think. So Rhonda would get everybody's, okay? All 160 or whatever employees are in District 1. Uh, but we're working on things. That's where I mentioned Kim and Lisa earlier. They're going to start approving these on the budget officer side, okay? So they work on campus. They know what you guys do. They understand TRIP. Uh, so they're going to streamline this process for us. After it leaves the budget officer, it goes to accounts payable. They're probably one of the most important people here because they flip a switch to pay you, okay? With that said, they're not really familiar with how we work in extension, okay? They're on campus. Uh, campus travel's a little bit different than extension travel, all right? So keep that in mind. Whenever we're going through this, uh, there's some places that you can add comment boxes. And I will stop there and say, if you see a comment box, it is your friend. Use it uh, because that is your opportunity to let any one of these people know why there's a questionable expense. What's a questionable expense? So me and Jeremy ride to State Fair together. And I stay at the Crown Plaza. And then I get meals and all that, right? So whenever I go in and do my trip, I've got these meals. I've got... Uh, uh, lodging, but I have no miles. That's common in extension, right? It's common. So when it gets down to either one of those people, they may have a question, well, how did you get to Louisville? So that comment box is my opportunity to say, well, I rode with a coworker, I rode with a neighboring county, or I drove a county vehicle. So make sure you clear up that, because if they have a question, it delays your payment. Because if anyone in that line of people have a question, they have to ask you to clarify. Your, your uh, trip request kind of gets kicked to the side until you touch it again and, and clarify that, and then it goes back to the bottom of the pile. So use those comment boxes to clarify any issues like that that you may have. So uh, we want you to be a good steward of the money of the county. It's not our money, it's the county's money. Public funds, right? So we want to be a good steward of those public funds Ride with those people. Share the rooms with those people. Just make sure you, you uh, list it in the comment box to clarify that if that is the case. Once Accounts Payable approves it, you'll get an email. Now, it'll be a very generic email that says uh, something about you're going to get paid within three days. I'm not sure if it has a total. I think it may. Usually when you get that email, it's in your account that day. That's my experience. Okay. Um... Going on down, so CURS. This all starts in CURS, okay? And before you think we're gonna have a dual entry, bear with me just a few minutes, we're not gonna have dual entry. One thing we've kinda of done for you uh, as extension agents, when Jeremy and I both have been there, we go to bat for you guys every day. We don't want you doing this, doing more than you have to, on the, especially this. So you start in CURS, we're doing CURS anyway. Uh, you're, you're putting in your day by day by day by day travel into curves. All right. Once you get that done for the month, I don't know if you have been using it, but this is new. This is not the exact same thing you've been sending into your district director. There is a monthly mileage log that looks sort of like this. All right. It started back in fe February for January travel. But it's a landscape form. I think the old form is a portrait form, but this one is a landscape. It's got every day that you put into curves already here. It's kind of like your receipt, an itemized receipt of your travel. So it's got your destination, your business purpose, the program, the mileage. And then the most important thing on the one on the screen is the 210 down there at the bottom right. Okay, 210. So, be aware that this is only day trip miles. Okay, so you may have 500 miles, but this only prints out 210. Where'd those other 290 miles go? They're your overnight miles. So on your overnight, you put them in individually. And we'll touch on that uh, when we get to the overnight, but I think you'll like the reason why you have to do that, okay? 
Uh, so you get this mileage log, you print it out. It then goes to someone locally. So one of our deficiencies is that we had no one approving, not really approving, but, but looking over these for errors locally. Everyone makes mistakes. If I would have had 100 miles one day and I accidentally added another zero, that gets, that's a big mistake, right? It happens. So we wanted someone locally looking at these, making sure that 210 was not 2100, whatever. So we want someone locally looking at these, signing off on them. That way we kind of at least have one roadblock for any potential errors. All right. So not on this one, but at the bottom of the one I'll show you in just a second, there's a place for some signatures. Uh, the place on the left is for the person doing the traveling. The place on the right is for the, the local approver, authorized reviewer, I think it's called on there. We are asking that that form go to your fiscal contact agent, whoever it may be, if it's your county manager, if it's your uh, facilitator, whatever that is, take that form to them and let them sign off on it. Now that's where I said it can be done electronically. A lot of counties have been doing it with Adobe. Uh, you can do that electronically if that's something you need to do in your office, okay? Uh, the old, uh, my, my way of thinking, I'm gonna print it out and have them sign it and then I, they're gonna give it back to me. Now it's a paper copy. We need to scan that back into our computer with those signatures on it if we don't do that electronic copy and attach that, okay? So think about that process. You're gonna to have to sign it and scan it back in. So once you scan it back into your computer, we're gonna kind of put it over here in a hold bucket or a file. I, I've created me a file on my desktop that says travel. All my travel receipts go in there, all these things go in there, okay? So once you've got it in there, in that file on your desktop, you're ready to move into the trip system, all right? So, Let's go back and touch on the curves. So how do you get that mileage log? Here's, here's we're, we're ex familiar with this expense record report. Uh, here's some examples. There's a couple different ways you can get it. You can drop down here at the PDF. It says mileage log day trips, mileage log overnight trips. Mileage log day trips is probably gonna be your, uh, the one you use the most. Mileage log overnight trips, we've found that it's not been used very much uh, because really you don't need it. It is there for your record. It's, uh, you can use it in the county for anything you, you need to in the, in the county for record, but to attach that to an overnight trip, you don't need to. Okay, so keep that in mind as we move forward. So if I click the, the day trips, it's going to download a little download here at the bottom and it's going to open it up. And this is, I've just got one example in the one I have here. In this example, I've, I've got 28 miles. And at the bottom left, the employee signature and date. The bottom right, the authorized reviewer printed name. We want to print your name because it's not printed on there. And then the authorized reviewer signature and date. That brings me to a point. Who signs the authorized reviewer? Who signs the county manager? Who signs the, the uh, fiscal contact? We've been asking the staff contact, which in a county manager situation, that is the same person. So in a county manager, you would ask another agent to sign off on your travel. So ask another agent, if you are that person in charge of the finances, ask another agent to sign off on your travel, okay? Has to be someone else. All right. So you've signed off on it, you've scanned it back into your computer, and that's when we go into trip. So let's go into trip. Anybody got any questions so far? All right, let me get into my... So here's where we get to our trip system. My UK, of course we know it, we log in. And yours may look a little bit different from mine, but yours should say employee self-service, tab at the top, okay? Uh, employee self-service tab has a lot of what we need on it for leave requests, um, time balances, your personal information. 
The most important thing today is the travel requests and travel expenses. I'll say this system is very uh, good. It's a solid system. It's, it's not pretty. Uh, it, it does exactly what we need it to do. It does more than what we need it to do in extension, okay? I'll say here, it says travel requests and travel expenses. On campus, a lot of times we have to request to travel. We have to say, you know, send our supervisor an estimated budget of our travel expenses. So those are travel requests. We don't do that in extension. This system will. And it does that in a way that's not very obvious. Okay, so keep that in mind. In just a minute, we'll talk about that. Ours is on the travel expenses side. Travel request, the travel's gonna happen in the future, right? No matter if like there's 10 minutes left in that day, it, it happens in the future. Travel expenses are already in the past, okay? So my, that is our typical setup and extension. We've already traveled. We've uh, got those mileage racked up on our vehicles. We've been, come back from that meeting and we won't reimburse. So I click on the travel expenses, uh, request the expenses, and it brings me here to the service map, okay? And I said a little bit ago, you could start here where it says create new travel document. Uh, if you did a proxy, you could uh, click there on behalf of. If I wanted to do Jeremy's uh, travel for any reason, I could do it on behalf of him. Most I would suggest would be go to your Traveler Work Center. Okay. Once you click that, you'll get a pop up. Now that is the first place you might have a hang up right off the bat. Uh, if, it, if your computer has not been to this website, has not allowed pop-ups, you have to click on the little red dot or the little orange bar across the top and allow pop-ups from this site, okay? So once you do that, this will pop up. And th these are all my trips that I've, I've uh, kind of put in, played with. Uh, this is my historical record of my trips, okay? Now you may get into this and you may not see anything. That could be two reasons. One, you've not taken any trips that you've been reimbursed for. Two, because this little thing here that says show trips in the past may be defaulted to say no previous trips. I like to keep mine on all. So I would suggest once you hit all and click apply, it will never change it. I can't promise that, but uh, it, it should open up your trips and show them if you hit all, okay? So here, here's my historical list of trips. Now, for this uh, training purpose, we're going to start here at the Create New Travel Document, all right? So now it brings up another page. It's got one choice you need to make on it. So this is where we, we uh, go to start thinking about our trips separated into day trips and overnight trips because there's two different templates. There's a day trip template. It does not have the per diem or the lodging on it. And then there's the overnight trip template, which does have the lodging per diem. Also there you'll see travel amendment. Now, like I said, this is a German software. We don't speak the same language, right? So. Travel amendment to me means I need to go in and change a trip that I've requested. And to an extent that's true, but you can always go into the Traveler Work Center and get back to that trip and change it. You mess up on the miles, you forget to add a receipt. Go back into the Traveler Work Center, open that document, change it. When do you use travel amendment? You only use a travel amendment if that document has gone all the way through the system. It's gone from that traveler to that supervisor, to that budget officer, to that accounts payable, and it's been paid, okay? It's been paid, it's been finalized. You get to uh, looking and, and something's not right. You left out a receipt, you accidentally uh, put the wrong amount in there, you were shorted money, you got too much money back, something's wrong after it went all the way through the system. That's the only time you'll use a travel amendment, okay? If you do have to use a travel amendment, make us aware. We can walk you through it. Let Rhonda know. Rhonda's great at this stuff in District 1. Uh, so let her know. She can walk you through it. It's a fairly easy process, but we want to make sure you get your money back, okay? Or you get it right. 
actually I had two agents in the same office. They thought they knew what they were doing. Um, and, and they clicked a button and, and uh, uh, they didn't get their full money back and they had to do a travel amendment. So we'll touch on what they clicked in just a second. So think about our trip, our, our monthly miles as day trip. And I, I venture to say that's gonna be more, uh, most of our miles are gonna be day trip miles, all right? So you went into CURS, you've done all your miles, you've printed that day trip mileage log off and you're gonna start your day trip, okay? So start. I'm going to back off and show you the whole page if I can. So this is the whole entire first page, all right? Not much on there, but we're going to walk through each one of those to, to kind of talk about it. So there's three pages that we kind of have to, to think about. One's the general data screen. This is where most of the stuff uh, goes in, most of the info. Two is the enter receipt screen. This is for uh, things like your, your registrations or your meal or lo lodging receipts or parking receipts or anything like that. If you don't have any of those, then you don't even have to do the screen two. Three is the review and send screen. This is where we've been advising you to do your attachment and make sure everything looks right and send it to be paid. So three, three different screens, okay? So, make you aware that there are some buttons here. You can, uh, you can click on the one, two, and three at the top, or you can click on the buttons here that says previous step, enter receipts. Uh, they're at the top and the bottom both. Uh, they'll take you the same place. So let's start with general data. Start date and end date. So if I were to ask you about your monthly trips, what was the start date of your July travel? July 1. What was the end date of your July travel? July 31, right? So that's what I'm gonna put in here. No matter what day July 1 or what day the first of the month is on, use that first day of the month. In a day trip setting, don't get hung up on specifics, okay? It's, we're, we're creating a generic, broad travel time, travel window, if you will, on a day trip. Now on an overnight trip, be real specific. All right, so start date, let's put in, uh, let's put in August 1st. And let's put in August 31st for the end date. So I've created that travel window of time that, that I've had some day trips in there. The time on a day trip is not crucial. Don't get hung up on it. It does not matter. I always suggest put eight o'clock on the first day and I always suggest to put 5.30 or five on the second day. So that's 1700, right? This is military time. If I were to put eight o'clock and uh, one time and 5.30, that's 5.30 in the morning. So make sure you use military time, okay? After, after, after PM, just add 12. Next is departure from first workplace uh, is your start. You only got two choices, workplace and home. On a day trip, don't worry about it. I suggest leaving this as departure from first workplace because we really don't really, it doesn't really matter on January 1st or July 1st if you left from your home or, or, or workplace, okay? The details are in that mileage log. All of your travel details are in that mileage log you printed out from CURS. Next, we gotta talk about our destination with the system. It defaults to the country USA. Now every country in the world's in here if you're traveling to those countries, great. On a day trip setting, you're probably just traveling to the USA. All right. Next is our region. And this is kind of where you, I would think about a region being your state and your city. Okay. State and your city. But now, this, this whole entire database is huge on the back end. It's massive. It's got every town in, in the state. It's got every town in every state. It's got every county in every state. Uh, plus all those other, however many countries we have in the, United, or in the world. So it's, it's based on a database. So what you put in here, you can't just put in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Okay, you have to search for exactly how Mount Sterling, Kentucky is. So these blue boxes on the right, right there next to where it says uh, USA, those are search features. 
So when you click that, it's going to bring up a pop-up. We love pop-ups in TRIP, and that's fine. They really help us. It's going to bring up a pop-up that you can search, all right? And we'll talk about the pop-up. So let's just click it. And now it's bringing me up to my personal value list. What's a personal value list? It's your favorites, okay? So I went in and created a personal value list just for demonstration purposes. You can do that. You can put in Lexington, Louisville, whatever places you frequently travel. Make your own personal value list. Now yours may not look like this when you come up to that. So I would click all values here on the right and it's gonna click, bring up another box. I'm gonna zoom back out. This is, it's got US. It knows to search for, count, uh, for places in the US. So it's got Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas. Now we don't wanna scroll through all those states and all those towns. Well, I accidentally clicked on it. So what we're gonna do now is show search criteria. And I know we're three pop-ups deep here, but we're, we're where we need to be. So the trip country, US, the trip region. I think of regions as our states. Like I said, this was a German software. I don't know if they have states in Germany. I wasn't paying attention that day in geography. But think of this as your state. So Kentucky. Capital K, capital Y. And if you'll notice on the screen, I'm not sure if it's big enough, but I have entered an asterisk. I'm from Eastern Kentucky. If y'all haven't noticed, I can't hardly say asterisk. So Floyd County, they told me to say little star. So it's the little star, shift eight. That asterisk, that, that little star is your friend. Okay? So it's your friend. It's kind of like your wild card. You know, if you type into Google, no matter what combination of K and Y you type, if one's capital letter and one's a, a lowercase letter, Google's going to find it. Right? Google's going to find it. This is not Google. That, that wild card, that little star, whatever you call it, tells this to go look for everything with that combination. So I'll tell you that all your states uh, are going to be easy. They're going to be capital letters, capital K, capital Y, all right? Capital C, capital O, capital F, capital L. I always put the asterisk in there just to make sure. Just get in the habit of it. The next one is my destination city. Uh, let's just type in Mount Sterling. So I'm just going to type in Mount Sterling. Does it have a G on it? Let's just see if y'all awake this morning. Now, why didn't it come up with anything? No search results found for region. So let's see if I can do... I wanna, I'm just going to put Mount in there. And then I'm going to hit the star. Search. Now I've got every mount in Kentucky. Okay? So the little star is your friend. Now I'm going to go down. Here is Mount Sterling. I'm just going to click it once and it puts it there where I need it to be. Okay? Now, how many people stay in their hometown every month, all month long, and you just travel in Mount Sterling if you're an agent here? Nobody. All right? Maybe some that. I had one lady that went about 10 miles a month to the post office in, I can't remember the county. So, this is uh, not very critical that you be specific here. If you want to, that's great. Uh, but all of our details of our travel are going to live in that mileage log. And I, like I said, on a day trip, we can be generic. And so knowing that we can be generic and we travel all over the state, all over our district for meetings, I'm going to suggest that agents especially use a different uh, code for that. And they want, I want them to use Kentucky and then other. So Kentucky other may not have a zip code, but it's where we're, what we're going to put in for our travel, for our monthly travel. Okay, for our day trip travel, for our overnight trip travel, we want to be specific. Because whenever we go to Fayette County or Boone County, we want to make sure we get the right per diems. On a, no, on a day trip setting, there's no meal per diem tied to it. The mileage rate for a day trip is what? 
54 and a half cents, no matter where you, where you go in the state, all right? So because we travel to, to different places over the month, I'm going to ask that we use Kentucky Other over a, uh, in a day trip setting. So it brings it back. I don't know where the end come from there. That's the German aspect, I guess, again, but whatever. If you use Kentucky Other, the next thing you'll see is the specific destination. This is a required field. So I'm going to say monthly, our C monthly mileage log, July, or what do we say, August 2018. Okay. This is the first time that you have an opportunity to tell whoever's in line to approve your travel where to find something. Because you went to Kentucky Other. They don't know that you went to Mount Sterling or Lexington or Paintsville or wherever. So this is a chance for you to say, see my mileage log for the details. See monthly mileage log, August 2018. Okay. Now, Brings us to a part that's kind of grayed out here. See that it's grayed out, I can't really type anything in. If you see it's grayed out and it's not showing really well on the screen, but you'll kind of understand when you get back to your computer. But I can't type anything there. And the one here uh, is uh, additional destinations. Now this, I know in your mind, you went to 40 different destinations in the month. We don't need that, okay? That is in our mileage log that we're going to attach. This is one of those things I tried, I mentioned earlier, we're, we're keeping the work off of you by doing that mileage log in curves. So additional destinations would only be used for trips. Uh, the one I can think of, and this, the best example I can think of, is back in the spring, a bunch of the ag agents went on an equine tour. I don't know, maybe some of you in the room went. They left from their offices, they all met in Lexington. They went from Lexington to, I don't know, Arkansas. They stayed all night. That's one destination. Okay. They got up the next morning. They did some tours. Uh, they got on the road and got to Texas. And they stayed all night. That's two destinations. They got up the next morning and they went to Oklahoma. They stayed all night. That's three. So this would be where additional destinations come into play. I've never been on a trip like that. I've been here almost 20 years, so you may or may not uh, ever use that, all right? So just wanted you to make you aware that, that what that is for. Additional information. So type of trip is grayed out uh, there. You can't type into it. It knows if it's in-state or out-of-state. Don't worry about changing it. It will do that for you based on the, the state uh, you pick up in the region, okay? Purpose of trip. Purpose of trip is a drop down box. When you see an arrow like that, it's a drop down box. I think there's nine, 13, 13 different ones of these. See there at the bottom, there's athletics, team travel, athletics, recruiting, athletics, official visit, clinical, research. Probably not using a lot of those, right? In extension. Don't know anybody that's going, going to Texas A&M here in a couple of weeks with the football team. But back up to, to uh, the top is where we had to pick one of these, pick two of these for extension. Try to make it relate because it's a required field. It's got a, a uh, little star beside the, the purpose of trip. It's required. So what we originally thought was this is where we can separate our county travel and our professional improvement. And that's how we did it at first. But then it got redundant and we were putting in two professional improvements and two day trips and, and we didn't, it just didn't work. So now our, our policy on this is all day trips, no matter if they are professional improvement or county travel, all day trips are gonna be zero, zero, okay? Zero, zero collaboration meeting as well as all overnight trips that are county travel funded, not professional improvement. Overnight trips that are professional improvement are gonna be zero one, okay? Zero one professional improvement. Don't get too hung up on that, but it, it would be uh, great if you could use that zero one as overnight professional improvement only with everything else being zero zero. 
So what am I doing here? I'm doing a monthly travel day trip, right? Which one would that be? Is that a zero, zero or a zero, one? Does county travel pay my monthly travel? Or does professional improvement pay my monthly travel? Come on, I know it's early in the morning. It's county travel, right? So I'm going to pick zero, zero collaboration meeting. Additional trip information. Uh, this is where it, first sign of redundancy. Uh, additional trip information has to have something in it, so I always put C monthly mileage log attached, something like that. Comments, this is your first opportunity if you have a weird deal. You've got county vehicles and you've got a uh, $15 reimbursement that you need. Well, how did you get there? This was where you would say no mileage, drove county vehicle. This may be also where you say I have a county vehicle, but I had to have, you know, 30 miles on my personal vehicle because I needed a truck. Okay, something like that. This would be your first time to explain anything unique about this month or this trip. So I advise you to use that if, if needed. Okay, it's to your advantage for you to clear up any muddy waters now before it goes through. Cost assignment. Cost assignment is a, a charge account. So every county in, in the state now has a charge account on campus at UK. Yours should default to your county. It should say 100% whatever county you're in. If it does not, let us know. Uh, we found that we did have some fall through the cracks and they were over on some other charge accounts and we've got those cleared up. We hope that everyone in extension has the right one. Um, sometimes we have some people with the same name, maybe we get them uh, backwards, but uh, make sure that that says your county uh, before you go any further. If it does not, call me, call Rhonda, call Tina, call Jeremy, we can get that fixed for you, okay? No big deal. Now, on changing cost centers, if you need to change one, why would you need to change a cost center? You need to charge it to another fund. Back in August, we had the state fair, correct? A lot of us traveled to state fair, and uh, it was a, you can charge that to the state funds. This is where you would do that. You would just charge it to a different account. By clicking charge, or change cost assignment, it's gonna bring up another pop-up, and it looks like this. Cost center is what we're dealing with. You would change that to that, whatever account it's charged to. Okay, simple change right there. Don't worry about orders. Orders are just sub, sub accounts, WBS element. Don't worry about that. That's a, a grant um, fund center and all that. You just need to type in right there where it says cost center. If it's the county, you don't have to change it. Then just leave it, skip right on through it. Okay. Now, if you needed to split that, you're going on a trip uh, PILD. Charles, I think you've been to PILD a couple times. JSEP, Washington, something like that. So anyway, a lot of times the uh, state fund will pay a portion of that. They may pay a $500 portion of that. And man, it would be really nice to put in here, charge $500 to that state fund. But this does not do that. We have to go back to about eighth grade math and do some percentages, okay? Remember whenever you thought you wouldn't use that in your math class? Welcome. So the, only, the way I think about this is don't worry about the, uh, the, the percentage until you get to the end. Put all the travel expenses in there. If your trip is $2,500, put, put it all in there. And you want $500 to come out of one pot of money, then that's what, 20%, right? You put in 20% come out of that one cost center, the other 80% comes out of the other. Okay, just simple math. If you need help with that, feel free to let us know. All right, so I'm going back to the main screen. And the next thing we see is per diems for meals. So on a day trip, it, nothing's there. Okay, nothing's there on a day trip because we, we don't get per diems for meals. Tuesday I had this same training in another county and the lady said, you mean I don't get breakfast for today? I said, are you staying all night? 
She said, nope. I said, no, you don't get breakfast for today. She said, I always did. And I said, well, that's why we're doing this. It's because you were not following policy and you're not supposed to get meals if you don't stay on up. So there's no meals for per diems here. There are per diems for meals here on a day trip. Next, mileage. It would be nice if I could just type in the miles there, but I can't. Okay, so I have to go in the inner mileage details here at the right. Click that and it's going to bring up a pop-up. I'm going to zoom back out. If you see a blue, and it's hard to see here, but where this blue box is, this whole row is blue on my screen. Okay, and you'll see that it sticks out better when you're sitting in front of a computer. But if you see a blue row, that is an active row. This is just a big spreadsheet, guys. It's just a big Excel spreadsheet. It's just a row of information that it asks for. So when this opens up, it'll be blue. You can type in here where it says miles driven. Don't get hung up on the date for a day trip. For a day trip, leave it, whatever. So, I don't know. Let's have 210 miles for this month for the day trip. Put 210 miles. Start location. Don't get hung up on that, but you have to put something. I'm going to put my blank county extension office okay and the in location it brings that down see monthly mileage log again it reminds that person to go look at that mileage log okay so boom that that is one line of data for your entire month all your miles for day trip goes in one line for your entire month don't add any overnight trip miles whatever's on that curse report Whatever you sign, whatever your uh, fiscal contact signs, put that bottom number in that row. That's it. We, don't, we didn't want you going in putting 25 days of travel in this. That's redundant. It takes too much time. We've printed out that CURS report, that mileage log, and we we're going to attach it in just a second. And this tells the system to charge that account for this many miles. All right? Next thing we need to talk about, the applicable mileage rate. I'll show you your choices. You got a federal rate, reduced federal rate, state rate. We are always going to use in extension, as, uh, with the exception of SNAP and FNIP, we are always going to use federal rate. You say, well, it's uh, the state's paying for my travel to the state fair. That is not state rate, okay? That is federal rate. So always use the federal rate. It defaults to that, so don't change it, okay? Don't change it. Just leave it federal rate. We had an agent or two do that. They got like 43 uh, cents per mile, so their mileage was wrong. It just, you know, wrong. And uh, they cheated themselves. So we had to do a travel amendment and all that. Um, again, comment box if you need it there. It's not very critical uh, in, in a day trip setting that that's uh, pretty straightforward. So I've got my 210 miles there. I need to go back to my main screen. I have to hit accept again. And it takes me back to my main screen. So I've got my cost center. I've got my miles. And I'm almost through this first page. Now we see it says trip is subject to pay only amount. And I cannot stress the importance of this enough. This is a box that you may never, ever, ever check. Okay? This tells the system to only give you, no matter what, no matter if that $2,500 trip is in there, and you check this box, it asks for that amount to the side. So this, if you check this box, it tells the system to only give you what amount you put in. Okay, when will I ever use that? Maybe if uh, your board will not let you go over your travel budget. I don't know what we got, $5,000 travel. I've got $48.95 spent. I know in June and I cannot go over that 105, right? So for my June travel, I checked that box, I put 105 in. And now that, that $2,500 trip, I'm only going to get, what, 105 This is where my two agents got hung up at the other day. They, hung, they checked this box thinking, don't really matter. They left that amount at zero. Guess what they got paid back? 
Zero. Guess how much money they were out? Over $1,000. Okay. So between the two of them, they were out $1,000 because they checked this one little box. So I guess it's bad for them, but it's good for you because I hit it more today. Okay. I can't stress it enough to do not use that unless you absolutely have to. Don't even click it. Because if I click it and I just leave this amount blank, it defaults to zero. Look at that, it's got zero in it. Now, it's, I guess I'm gonna get zero back. So do not click that button unless you absolutely have to. All right, trip includes amounts paid by third party. So, now, uh, this transaction is between you and the university. The third party is your county. So, does your county pay a registration for you ahead of time? Do y'all go on a, a staff meeting maybe and there's a registration fee? See some heads shaking, yes. That's a third party payment. Does your county have a credit card that you spend your lodging with? That's a third party payment, okay? So why do we care about those third party payments? The uh, IRS, there's a little rule, it's called the IRS Accountability Plan, it says that all of your expenses spent on you, whether whoever it was by, spent on you to travel for work, need to be reported back to your employer. Who's our employer? We talked about it earlier, University of Kentucky. So the county may know that they spent $15 for staff meeting registration, and they may keep it in their QuickBooks, but university doesn't get that. And you know, not that we're using it or filing any reports or doing anything with it. It's the, it's the way the IRS accountability plan is written. We have to report that back to our employer. Now, have we been compliant on that in the past? Probably not, okay, probably not. So the next box, the trip amount, includes amounts paid by third party. If that is the case, if you have something that your, your county paid on your behalf that month, click this. Now, does that tell how much registration fee was by clicking that? No. We're going to do that on the next screen. This just kind of tells the next screen to look for that, give us the option to enter those. I don't know why. I didn't build this software, but we, it, it's just written like that. So if that's the case, I'm going to pretend in this trip setting I had a $15 registration fee for a uh, meeting. So I'm going to click it. Uh, the next question is, trip includes personal travel, yes or no? We cannot move forward without answering the yes or no question. 99.9999325% of the time, you're going to click no on that. Okay, especially on the day trip setting. You're gonna click no, you have to click one. If you click yes, then you have to put in the days that you were uh, of personal travel. Now, what, is, what does that mean? So let's think about it. If you're going out west, or if you're going to San Antonio, or Florida, or wherever, for a conference, and you want to stay an extra week, because you're already down there, the family's coming down and they want to go out, run around, see the Alamo or whatever, then you're probably going to take a week vacation and stay down there, right? That is perfectly acceptable. That is where this would come in. You would put yes on that and then put the dates of your personal time, okay? So most of the time that is not going to be the case, so we're going to click no, all right? Now, over on the right, I didn't want to leave it out, but we don't need it on a day trip unless you're flying somewhere through the month. Anybody flying anywhere to their clients? Probably not. Nobody's flying through the month on a day trip setting, coming back to where you're sleeping in your own bed after you've been on an air, airplane a couple times. So we're going to pass on through that for now. So this brings us to the end of page one. I'm going to save the draft, so save draft. And if you'll notice here at the top, I saved the draft, it says expense report 56788. 56788 was saved with status of draft. Everybody see that by the green check mark? Now that is an important number. That number there is gonna change every time you create a new document. Every time you create a new document, it's gonna give you a different number. We've had 56,788 documents go through university system, okay? So I want you to, to write this number down because it's gonna be important. So get a post-it note. Uh, write it down. 
And don't worry about the zeros. So just the last five digits in this case, I guess maybe next year when we get hit 100,000, 100, it may be uh, six digits, but five, six, seven, eight, eight, I would write that down, okay? And then we wanna go on to our enter receipt screen. We can do it here, we can jump up to the two and hit enter receipts, either way. So now looking at the enter receipt screen, it's just a blank spreadsheet, all right? It's just a blank spreadsheet. It asks some, for some specific things. I've not got an active row. There's no blue line here until I hit new entry right there, okay? So when I hit new entry, this is first row is gonna be blue. Number is gonna be automatically populated. Status is gonna be automatically populated. First thing we need to make a choice on is expense type. This is only for those other expenses that you may incur, parking, uh, registration fees, here we've got listed airfare, probably not gonna be a, a day trip thing for, for extension. Baggage, probably not gonna use that. Car rental, you could probably have a car rental if you need to take some, some people on a trip. Gasoline for that rental car, ground transportation, uh, if you need, you know, need to use a taxi or whatever. Uh, any other expenses that may not fall there. Parking and tolls, I see us using some. Maybe at a, if we go to the God House for a, for a meeting or a, uh, Lexington, there's a parking garage. Uh, I see the biggest one us using is registration. That $15 registration fee for that training or that $50 registration fee for that meeting. So on this one, let's pretend I had a $15 registration for a staff meeting. So I picked registration. And I wanna point out here, it says estimated amount. This goes back to where I talked about uh, on campus we have to send in a request to travel. We would put in an estimated amount if that date has not yet been, been there, okay? Um, so skip over that and put in the actual expense amount. So what was my actual expense for that meeting? I'm gonna say $15. And the meeting occurred on the second Wednesday of the month, so on August the 8th. And I'm going to pick one of these, it says expense paid by. Yeah. Paid by employee, paid by third party, paid by ProCard or PRD. Paid by employee is that. You paid it out of your pocket, you have a receipt for it, whatever it may be, parking, tolls, registration, whatever. Paid by third party, your county sent it in for you with a check, you paid with a credit card at the parking garage, uh, whatever. I'm gonna pretend that the county sent in my check for registration. Uh, third party. Now paid by ProCard and PRD, we use those on campus, don't worry about those. So your, your two choices would be employee and third party. And once you do this, this no, the system knows not to pay you back because that was already paid, you paid by third party. Okay, and a comment here, what is that registration fee? I would say August staff meeting registration. If I had another entry, I could do accept a new entry, or if I'm done, I can just hit accept. In the interest of time, I'm gonna hit accept and let that be my only other expense, okay? I can have, I think, up to 25 of these. So we've told it miles, we've told it uh, uh, destination, we've told it the, all the rest of our expenses, pretty much done, right? So I like to hit save draft a lot, just in case, you never know. Um, Gives me the same number, and I want to go on to the next screen, which is the review and send screen. I can do it at the bottom, I can do it at the top, or I can just hit the three at the top, review and send. Brings me to this page here. Now, I told you you're gonna to have to attach something. So it's got a button that says here at the top, attachments. I'm going to click on it. It's gonna open up just like a normal email would, like whenever you're trying to attach something to an email. This is where you pause trip. Pause trip, minimize it, don't close it. You can always get back to it, but minimize it and go back to that document, that scanned uh, curves document. You know, when you scan something in, it goes to somewhere on your computer and it's named something funky, Xerox 479829, whatever. So we have to rename that. And we have to rename that with uh, specific naming, okay? And I say this mainly for your benefit. 
because if you do not name it specifically, it will not open up on campus and at the computers and over on accounts payable. So you have to name it something less than 17 characters and it, we need it to be the trip number, which is that on my case, five, six, seven, eight, eight, I think it was. So I, I would name the receipt for this, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and the word receipt. No space, no capitalization, no punctuation, no hashtag, no smiley face, no nothing. Just those numbers, that five, six, seven, eight, eight, whatever yours is, no space, and the word receipt. All right. Now that brings me to a say that you need to make that one attachment. So in this instance, I would have two pages. I would have that monthly mileage log that came out of CURS, and I have that receipt for that meeting, that $15 registration receipt. I need to combine those into one document. Adobe is really good by letting you do that. Uh, it's really easy. But name that all to one thing, 56788 receipt, whatever that number is. All right, so then you go, you hit attachments, you choose that file, it brings you to your, your uh, folders. This is actually the one I use. This is my travel, travel uh, folder, 56471 receipt right there. I click on it, I click open, it puts it here. Say that and it's not going to do it for me. There it is. So 56, well, Open, 56471 receipt. Now am I done? It's not uploaded yet until I hit upload, okay? I hit upload and boom, it's there. Now I advise you to kind of click on this and make sure it's exactly what you thought it was. Uh, make sure it wasn't anything else that accidentally got renamed or, or you accidentally renamed the wrong file, okay? Because that will delay your process. If you put on, if you renamed the wrong file and it's last week's board meeting agenda, and it's on there, it, has, it don't show anything, all right? So make sure it's what you need it to be. Now, final action. If I was writing this software, I would not have put the final action there because it's not the final action. I would put it at the bottom. So let's skip over it and come back to it, okay? Summary. Summary is, like it says, a summary of this whole trip. Uh, total mileage, $114.45 here. For 210 miles. Paid by that third party was $15. So the total travel expenses this month for me was $129.45. We're in compliance with our risk accountability plan. UK knows that $129.45 uh, was spent on me this month. They know every dollar spent on me for my travel. Now, Paid by the UK and third party, we want to take that 15 out of this reimbursement. So it takes it out, whatever that you mark, uh, UK or third party, it minuses that out. I'm going to get back on this trip here, 11445. Okay? If that looks right to you, then you're good to go, right? Don't have to go back and make any changes. Down here at the bottom, it says cost assignment. It just breaks it down. If you had it broken down into two, three, four, whatever cost assignments, it would break those down for you. So going back to that $2,500 trip, if we did 80-20, then it would uh, have $500 to that one cost center and $2,000 for the other, all right? Now this display travel document button is what I recommend that you do next. It does exactly what it says. I'm gonna click it. It's gonna bring up my travel document. It summarizes everything. It's a real nice form that you can look at what I do with mine and what I suggest in my trainings is that you print this out, lay it on your desk, lay it on this place that is fresh in your mind, you see it every day until you get your money back. Okay, because this, this summarizes everything and reminds you that you're going to get $300. Or in the case of those two agents the other day, they were going to get over $1,000 between them. They kind of forgot about it and it kind of fell off their radar and then they went back in a month later and checked their, their bank account and they were down. So they didn't really print this out, it wasn't in their mind. Uh, so that's what I do with mine. Also, I would suggest for accounting purposes in your county, print this out and give it to the fiscal contact. Okay. So that brings me to, to a point uh, to say that we are going to bill the counties after the fact. 
We're not taking travel money and putting it in the pot and seeing how much you use and then giving it back to you. We're sending you a bill. Uh, we're, we're working toward a monthly billing system. So uh, right now we're on a quarterly basis, but everyone makes mistakes. Our computers make mistakes. I want you to make sure that that one fourteen forty five comes to you on your bill, not as two twenty eight ninety. All right. I want you to use that for your purposes. One to to reconcile with back with my bill that I send. Two, you can also. Uh, Book that on your QuickBooks as a uh, future expense to come up. So when you get that bill, it kind of washes out. Uh, well, let's start on an overnight trip, okay? Start on an overnight trip. Uh, like I said, most of our overnight trips in extension are three, four nights most of the time. Uh, we get to an overnight trip the same way we did our day trips. So we get to employee self-service. Uh, we go down to travel request and travel expenses and the Traveler Work Center. It's going to pop up. Hopefully uh, you, you've already taken care of the pop-up issue we talked about. Create a new travel document. So I'm going to create an overnight trip. I'm going to select the overnight trip template and I'm going to hit start. It's going to bring up something that looks exactly like the, the day trip template we talked about with the exception it's got a box in the per diems for meals now, okay? So let's talk about overnight trips. There's a little, uh, a good thing on an overnight trip that I don't know if you guys know yet, but now, as far as after October 1, or after today, if you have an overnight trip, you can get reimbursed for it separately immediately after you get back, okay? So that means that those trips the first of the month that you've put on your personal credit card that you have to wait and wait and wait till the 10th of the next month to get, no longer apply. You can come back home, you put those overnight trips in, in the uh, trip overnight template, you get reimbursed within seven to 10 days, hopefully. Okay, does everybody understand that? So that's one reason that we don't have to print out that mileage log, that overnight mileage log. Uh, you can put the, these in more specifically. So on an overnight trip, general data, we want you to be specific in this one. So exactly the date and time you left. So I left uh, last, uh, the 18th. No, I actually had a trip that day. So let's, let's do this. Uh, the 24th. I left the 24th. I got back the 25th. Uh, I left at 8 o'clock. Let's say I left at 5 in the morning, 5 zero, zero. Okay, does, does it matter what time I leave in, in travel status? Does it matter? Some of you say, shaking your head, yes. It matters because policy says that if you're not in travel status between this, this time and this time, you're not entitled to that meal. Okay, so I left before 6 o'clock. I'm entitled to breakfast for that day. If I left at 8 o'clock, I would not be entitled to breakfast, okay? So 5 o'clock, same thing with dinner. If I don't get back until after 9, I'm not entitled to dinner. So that night, I may have came back at 8.30. So what is that, 20.30. So I would not get dinner that night, okay? Now, this is, uh, need to be specific here. Did you leave from home or did you leave from your first workplace? Uh, so make sure you, you put the, the one here. If it's closer for you to leave from home, put in leave from home, okay? If it's closer for you to come back from, the, from uh, your meeting to home, put in home. Country, it does not have anything there. On the previous one we talked about, it had US, USA. So the country, uh, we know on overnight trips, you could probably be anywhere in the world. So we've got to scroll down until we find the USA. It's got all the countries in the world. German software engineers weren't good to us, so they didn't put us up the top. USA, okay. The region, this is where we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. Region search, go to all values, show search criteria. The region, uh, let's pretend we went to San Antonio, Texas. So TX, asterisk, S-A-N, asterisk, search, 
San Antonio, San Angelo, all those are come up. So I'm going to pretend I went to San Antonio, it's there. A specific destination, I would say, type in, be more specific here if you're, it's your national conference. Uh, now the people uh, outside of extension don't know what NACAA means. They don't know what NAE4HA means. Okay, so be specific, but also be generic. Don't put in uh, the acronyms that we need, that we know. So you can put National Association Conference. Something like that. Just anything. Uh, we're not mandating a specific way to say that, but put in something that, that is relevant to somebody who may not know you or know what you do. Additional destinations, excuse me, may uh, come into effect here on an overnight trip. Specifically, if you're spending multiple nights in different cities, put those in, okay? Really simple, you put in the date and the location. We're not gonna do it in the interest of time today. Uh, it knows it's out-of-state travel. Can everyone see that okay? It knows it's out-of-state travel. Uh, the federal rate is defaulted, so it knows that you get the federal rate. Don't change that. Purpose of trip is the same. A lot of our overnight trips are professional improvement sometimes, so that would be a zero one. Let's pretend it's a professional improvement trip. Additional trip information, again, just National Association Conference in San Antonio, Texas. Just something there to let someone know kind of where it was at. If you need to comment, this would be probably where you would use the comment. I had some questions in between breaks, or in the break there that uh, we want you guys to be good stewards of your county money. We want you guys to, to make sure you get the most economical travel. If you want to, uh, to split a room with your friend, then by all means do it. Tad told me his trip to uh, Chattanooga cost less than 200 bucks, 150-ish dollars. So if he would have went by himself, it, it would have cost probably upwards of five, right? But he split it with three, uh, two or three other agents and uh, it was down in the $150 range, okay? So we want you to do that. This comment box is where you would do that though. Where you would say, you know, we, we shared a rental car and I'm only paying a third of the total receipt. Because those rental cars, they don't give you a third receipts, do they? They give you one receipt. All right. So this would be where you would make those comments. Make those notes. Think of that person who has no idea what you do. Their travel is completely different from yours. So think about that. All right. So put that comment in there. I would say, I can't say that enough that this would... Those, when they question you, it slows your reimbursement down. We're not here to slow your reimbursement down. We want you to get paid back as fast as possible. Again, the cost assignment is the same as we talked earlier. You just change the cost assignment to that account number that you uh, uh, have if, it, if it, that is the case. Per diems for meals. Now, you'll notice that there is a box there besides per diems for meals. If you do not check that, you will not get those per diems back. So you have to say, yes, give me my per diems for meals. Now, is that the end of that? No. Another thing pops up there. And what does it say? Entry deductions for meals. It says number of deductions. Okay. Enter deductions for meals. It says number of deductions. I can't type in anything there because it's grayed out. So I'm going to click the enter deductions for meals. And this is very important. It knows the, uh, my travel window. This is essentially my travel window for the dates that I put in, 924, 925. It knows that I potentially should get reimbursed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each of those days, potentially. Okay? So right now, the way it stands, there's a box out there for each day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, this is backwards than the way I think. Okay, and, I, and you may think the same way I do on this. If I were to request reimbursement for this, my mind normally says, well, just check the ones you need reimbursed for. Right? I don't know if you, you think the same way I do, but I would think I would check those boxes. You do not. You check the boxes where a meal has been provided for you. 
that meal in that registration was provided. You checked that box. That meal at the hotel, the breakfast that you were given, you checked that box. It says you don't get reimbursed for that. Okay? That's backwards. So, in this instance, let's, let's pretend that I went to, uh, I got up and left at, at 5 o'clock, I said, so I'm getting breakfast. I'm going to leave it blank. On the road to wherever I went, San Antonio, I ate lunch. I got there. Sorry, I ate lunch and I paid for it myself. I'm going to leave it blank. I got there and there was an awards dinner. It was part of the registration. I clicked it. That means take it off of my reimbursement. Okay. The next morning I got up and there's breakfast at the hotel. Okay, so I'm not reimbursed for breakfast. Uh, lunch, maybe I ate on my own. And dinner, I think I said I got back at 8.30. Now this system will take that off. Uh, I always advise you just to go ahead and take it off as well. Okay. So, the three check mark boxes are boxes that where meals were provided either via registration or via uh, hotel uh, breakfast. Okay. I had a lady last week argue with me that she got all of her meals back, the ones that she checked, and she did not. Okay, it's just backwards. Um, so be aware. You're cheating yourself if you, if you uh, do it the other way. So enter mileage details, same thing, except we're not putting a total in for the trip. On uh, an overnight trip, we want to put your day miles in. So every, if you go to the airport and that's 72 miles, you put 72 miles in on day one. If you fly out and you come back and on the second day or third day, whatever, you uh, have 72 miles back home. So I'm going to say start location. You need to be a little bit specific. Whatever county extension office you left from. And you traveled to the National Association Conference uh, on 924, 925. I'm going to change the date. I came back. And I had 72 miles back from the Lexington Airport. Airport, I can't spell. And it's the county extension office. Be specific with the in location too, please. Um, I should have put Lexington Airport there. Okay, now I've got 72 miles there, 72 miles back on my example. All right. Uh, except I go back to the main page. Same thing here at the bottom. Trip is subject to pay only amount. I caution you to never check that unless you absolutely need to. Trip includes amounts paid by third party. Most of the time that's going to be the case. We're going to have it on a credit card, a check, or something. Uh, check that box. Includes personal travel. It's you know, more than likely, or more uh, likely the case on a trip like San Antonio or wherever that you want to take some vacation time on the